Hello friends, this video on NEET genetics is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let us now discuss the third pattern of inheritance that is the pleiotropic inheritance. So as we discussed here, one gene controls multiple traits. So that means there's, there would be just one gene, but the multiple alleles of that particular gene would affect many characters. Now, it is not necessary that all the characters would be equally influenced. Now, some characters would be more influenced when compared to others. For example, let's say that this is a gene and this gene controls many different traits. So that trait where it has, I mean, where it has more influence, that would be called the major effect and all others would be called secondary effects. So that's why I said that it is not necessary that all the traits would be equally influenced. Some will be more influenced, the others would be less influenced. So let us look at examples. One, the same gene controls the wing size, eye color and dorsal bristles position in Drosophila. So if you look at its eye color or if you look at its wing size or if you look at the position of the bristles on the dorsal side. All of these are controlled by the same gene. Similarly, if you look at the uh, sickle cell anemia disease in human beings, that, that is also caused by a gene which is pleiotropic in nature. That is that gene also has like one defect in one gene. That is one defective gene, but it causes many different impacts. Now, when these effects are related to each other, it is called a syndrome. For example, Let's say that there is a gene and this gene has multiple effects. If all of these effects are somewhere related to each other, then all of these effects together is called a syndrome. So we say that a pleiotropic gene is responsible for this particular syndrome. If you talk about the garden pea, the gene which controls the flower color and the seed color, it's the same gene. Same gene is controlling the colors of the flower as well as the uh, colors of the seeds. Like in peas, you have option, the seed can be yellow or green in color. Similarly, if you talk about the flowers, the flowers could be either white in color or pink in color. So all these color of flowers and seeds, they are all dependent on one particular gene. So let us talk about the sickle cell disease and understand why is it an example of pleiotropy. So sickle cell disease occurs due to the presence of structurally abnormal hemoglobin. So how does this happen? So why do you have this abnormal hemoglobin? So if you look at this image, normally what is the shape of the RBCs, the red blood cells? Normally they are round in shape. But when somebody is suffering from this disease, what happens is many of the RBCs become sickle shaped. Like as you see here, some of the RBCs are no more round, but they are shaped like sickle. So this is caused by a change in one nucleotide in a particular gene, which is called the HBB gene, the hemoglobin gene, which encodes information to make the beta globin subunit of hemoglobin. So this protein is used by the RBCs to carry oxygen to different body parts. In fact, that is one of the most important functions of the RBCs, right? And the gene which is responsible is the HBB gene. So what does this gene do? This gene encodes information to make the beta globin subunit of hemoglobin and this protein is used by RBCs to carry oxygen to different body parts. Now why is it a pleiotropic disease? Because the expression of a single mutated HBB gene, that is a single change or a single defect in this HBB gene can produce multiple consequences in the body. So one defect in this gene can cause multiple impacts on the body. So one gene control multiple traits that is pleiotropy. So that is why this is a pleiotropic disease. Now what happens in this disease? Now as I said that since the RBCs become sickle shaped so they cannot flow easily and therefore the possibilities of blood clots increases like the round RBCs they flow easily throughout the body but these sickle shaped they get stuck and therefore blood clots 
are more probable so what kind of damage or what kind of multiple effects it has on the body now when the blood doesn't flow easily throughout the body what will be what will be happening that many organs will feel the deficiency of oxygen because oxygen is not reaching them so damaged organs high bp vision loss so these this could be some of the impacts so what could be the impact damaged organs now when i say damaged organs many different organs in the body can get damaged due to lack of oxygen similarly high blood pressure or sometimes even vision loss because you see blood and oxygen and supply of oxygen is needed by each and every part of the body and if that is not happening so different parts of your body will get affected so the same thing is happening here just one defect in one gene is causing multiple impacts as you can see here so that is why it this is a very suitable example of pleiotropy now let us look at the genetics of the sickle cell disease how it gets uh, transmitted or transferred from one generation to the next now the carriers of sickle cell gene they remain normal otherwise they may have some mild symptoms of sickle cell anemia when they are exposed to low oxygen concentration so what do we mean by carriers of sickle cell gene carriers means they would be heterozygous like if you see here the father as well as the mother both of them are heterozygous so they have capital r small r so small r represents a defective gene so wherever you have this small r that means that person is carrying a defective gene but still the person is not affected with sickle cell disease so the person will be affected with sickle cell disease only when he is homozygous with defective gene for example this person is affected because it has two small r's so he is affected whereas the father and the mother they are just carrier they carry it they might show some mild symptom of anemia but they are not suffering from the sickle cell disease so what are the possibility of transmitting sickle cell disease in this case so there is a possibility that one out of four children would be normal two out of four children might be carrier but not affected and one out of four children might be affected by the disease so this is the scenario when both the mother and the father are unaffected but they are carrier of the defective gene now what if one of the parents is already affected so if the father is affected and the mother is unaffected but carrier so in this case the possibility of the disease in the next generation is all the more so in this case the possibility of having an unaffected normal child is not at all there so the children would either be affected by the disease like 50% of the children will be affected by the disease and 50% of the children would not be affected but they would be a carrier of the defective gene so this is how the genetics of the sickle cell disease is so now when we discussed about pleiotropy also let us quickly see how is polygenic inheritance different from pleiotropy so basically both of these are exactly the opposite thing in polygenic inheritance multiple genes will control one trait in pleiotropy one gene will control multiple traits so just the reverse so as i have discussed intelligence eye color hair color free attached ear lobes human height skin color all of these are like one one trait but each of these traits they are dependent on multiple genes whereas in pleiotropy we talk about multiple traits but there is just one gene which is responsible like in sickle cell disease there is just one hbb defective gene which is responsible for causing so many multiple effects for damaging so many body organs for uh, making abnormal blood pressure for spoiling the vision similarly in garden pea the seed coat color and the flower color both of these traits are dependent on the same gene so these are some examples of pleiotropy so please do not get confused they are just the opposite things and definitely not the same thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you